Welcome to another Last Hour Bereans, Last Days Update, where we discuss Bible prophecy, expose the wolves and false teachings that have crept into the church, declaring the soon return of the Lord, first for His church in the air, and then with His church at the end of the tribulation. Look up for our redemption. Welcome, everyone, to another LHB Last Days Update with Chris and Lewis. And today we start our new series, The Devil Speaks, where we expose Satan's gospel, Satan's laws, Satan's Bible uh, that he uses in Hollywood and entertainment. Um, but before we begin, Brother Lewis, why don't you say hello to the LHB family? I'd like to welcome everyone back and those who are watching uh, for the first time. Uh, we also thank those who watch and who comment and who spread the message, who share, you know, what we, uh, what we, what we do here on the video. We thank you very much. Um, it, it's, very, it's a blessing to us. Amen. Okay, if you guys are new to our channel, uh, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Hit that notification bell. That way, every time we upload a video, you guys are notified. Don't forget to like and share the video. Is that how we circulate around YouTube and, you know, the YouTube algorithms, how that goes, right? Um, so the devil speaks, right? Um, we're going to be looking at a clip shortly. But Brother Lewis, you and I have been speaking for years about how Satan has his doctrine out there, and he has his mouthpieces, doesn't he? Uh, yes, he does. And he's... It used to be there's an old saying that the devil's greatest trick was that uh, he made everyone believe it, that he really didn't exist. Well, that has changed in the past, I don't know, 30, 40 years, 20 years, that now he wants everyone to know. And now he's actually speaking out and spreading his gospel even more. Um, and, and some of the things that he does and people see, they actually agree with uh, what, they, what they see on TV and, and how he's portrayed. Right, right. So um, before we continue, I want to show this clip from uh, Malice. This is a clip that you found uh, starring uh, Alec Baldwin back in the day. And uh, I want you guys to hear this clip, and then we're going to come back and talk about it and compare what Alec Baldwin was saying to what Satan says in the scriptures. Roll it. The question is, do I have a God complex? Dr. Kessler says yes. Which makes me wonder if this lawyer has any idea as to the kind of grades one has to receive in college to be accepted at a top medical school if you have the vaguest clue as to how talented someone has to be to lead a surgical team i have an md from harvard i am board certified in cardiothoracic medicine and trauma surgery I have been awarded citations from seven different medical boards in New England, and I am never, ever sick at sea. So I ask you, when someone goes into that chapel and they fall on their knees and they pray to God that their wife doesn't miscarry, or that their daughter doesn't bleed to death, or that their mother doesn't suffer acute neural trauma from post-operative shock, who do you think they're praying to? Now, you go ahead and read your Bible, Dennis, and you go to your church, and with any luck, you might win the annual raffle. But if you're looking for God, he was in operating room number two on November 17th, and he doesn't like to be second-guessed. You ask me if I have a God complex? Let me tell you something. I am God. And this sideshow is over. As you can see from that clip, Mr. Baldwin, uh, who plays, I believe, a doctor, is on the stand, and he's saying, you know, hey, when you pray, who do you think they're praying to when they're on their knees praying to God? You know, and then he says something about, I don't have a God complex. I am God. What, what do you say about this? Well, if you go back to the word, these are Satan's words, exactly. Uh, uh they they might he might paraphrase it differently but this is what he talks about you know this is who he thinks he is he and he wants to be worshiped people don't realize that 
Satan's problem is that he wants to be worshipped uh, by humans. And, and we read this after the three and a half years when he goes into the temple and he declares himself to be God and he wants to be worshipped by people. He's always wanted this. And this is part of his uh, campaign that he spreads the word out, you know, in certain places. And Hollywood is his biggest mouthpiece. And you're referring to the three and a half. You're talking about the Antichrist being possessed by Satan during the tribulation period. This is for our viewers who may not understand what it references. You're talking about the temple that's going to be rebuilt in the tribulation period uh, by Antichrist. And he's going to set up. Uh, a throne actually in the Holy of Holies and declare himself God, right? Uh, correct. Uh, there will be three and a half years of peace. This is going to happen, like you said, uh, at the tribulation. So the Lord will come for his church, uh, and the period of tri tribulation will start. Um, and then three and a half years after that, you know, that's when Satan goes into the temple. Uh, and w we know this has been his plan all along. Uh, it's not a surprise to us because we read it in the Word. God warns us. God wants us to know what's happening and what is going to happen so we will be prepared and not be afraid, afraid of what's coming. That's right. But, yet yeah, we see in Hollywood, like from this clip, I mean, this is – I didn't even know this, this movie existed until you, you, you reminded me. You're like, hey, this movie with Alec Baldwin in it. This guy basically is saying everything that's found in his, uh, Isaiah chapter 14 and also in Ezekiel 28. But we'll, we have Isaiah 14 here, and you have it in front of you. And I think we're going to read from verse 12 to 15. So whenever you're ready, go ahead and read those verses, and then we'll compare that to what Alec Baldwin in his role said. All right, and this is what it says. How thou art fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning, how thou art cut down to the ground, which this will weaken the nations. For thou hast said in thy heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. Now, brother, we, you know, this is what God said. Lucifer ha said in his own heart in his spirit, when he was still in heaven right before he got cast down. And you, you see the same sentiment coming out of Alec Baldwin's mouth. Now, you know, granted, a lot of these actors, maybe they don't know or realize that they're working for the enemy or that they're being used of the enemy or that some of them may be possessed. But, you know, some of these roles, man, like you see Alec Baldwin on the stand and the way he's talking with the arrogance he's, he's talking with, right? It's hard not to think that the man is possessed, right? Uh, yes, it goes beyond acting. Uh, we um, we know from Johnny Depp, uh, he was asked one time why he doesn't watch his own movies. And he actually said, and you can look it up uh, on YouTube, he said, because it's not me, it's him. Okay? So he's saying that he's not really acting, that is him. And then you have to wonder... Who's him that he's talking about? Um, actually, Denzel Washington has said the same thing. And you uh, showed a clip one time of uh, Beyonce saying that that's not her. Uh, she has an alter ego on stage. It's called Sasha. Um, and you see the change in her face uh, from when she's talking normal to when she's a performer. Now, these people think that they're just acting. Um, they don't realize what they're doing. Okay, but they are really speaking for him, for the devil. Yeah, and that clip with uh, Beyonce, she was on the Oprah Winfrey show, and she was saying how her uh, her other ego, alter ego, was Sasha Fierce. And you can literally see a transformation when she, from when she's off stage to when she's on stage. Michael Jackson also uh, had an alter ego, and so did Prince. And a lot of these. Uh, 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 Hollywood stars and rock stars and musicians and all of that and TV stars, a lot of them have a so-called alter ego. And the problem is this. They'll do anything for power and fame. And, you know, the, the Bible says, what does it profit a man if he gained the whole world but loses his soul? And just from that clip uh, that we showed in the beginning, uh, Malice with Alec Baldwin, that's just a small snippet of what Hollywood puts out. 
you know, we're going to be showing clips from uh, uh, the TV show Lucifer. And you and I talk about this show a lot. And um, it, it's, it's basically a PR stunt for Satan, isn't it? Uh, yes, it's, it's everything that Satan wants the world to know about himself, his view of himself. Um, and, and if you watch the show and really don't really recommend it, it's, uh, the acting sometimes is bad and there's just a lot of things in there. But, you, you know, a mature Christian can watch this show and, and, and see where it's actually Satan speaking through the, uh, the actor in the show. Um, and you know, what, what we just read, how he exalts himself, there's a part on, on, in the show where he just says, I am God. Wow. And, you know, matter of fact, we have a clip, uh, from Lucifer and we're going to be showing a lot of clips from this show, uh, because it's called Lucifer for crying out loud. Right. So <laughs> what better show to, to pick apart? Uh, here's a clip of, uh, the actor who plays Lucifer, the fallen angel, uh, speaking to God and how he's, a absentee landlord and all that roll it <laughs> you, you cruel manipulative bastard is this all part of your plan it's all just a game to you, isn't it? Hey? Well, I know punishment. And he did not deserve that. He followed your stupid rules, and it still wasn't good enough. So what does it take to please you? Break your rules and you fall, follow them and you still lose? Doesn't matter whether you're a sinner. Doesn't matter whether you're a saint. Nobody can win, so what's the point? What's the bloody point? Well, as you can see, you know, uh, Lucifer is basically accusing God of everything that actually Lucifer is, right? I mean, he's saying that, you know, uh, that good people shouldn't, you know, die, and, and, and assuming that, you know, we're all good, which the Bible says there's none good, no, not one. Uh, in this television show, Lucifer is actually portrayed as uh, a caring, uh, lovable person who actually cares for humanity and didn't want to be the quote-unquote ruler of hell, right? Uh, yes, and we, we go back to Greek mythology in Hades. Uh, it's, it's the same thing. Uh, you know, he was put down in hell while uh, Zeus and um, uh, Poseidon, you know, took the sky and the sea and he didn't want this, and he doesn't want to see people suffer. And in the show Lucifer, he doesn't want people to suffer. He doesn't want people to have pain. He wants everything to be beautiful. But he forgets one thing is the reason that most of the time we have pain is because we cause it uh, ourselves because of our falling nature, our sin nature uh, after the fall. And he blames God for everything. And you know, uh, and everyone knows that, People actually do blame God down the street. It's God's fault. If, and this is the way what they say. If I were God, I wouldn't allow this to happen. Well, thank God that they are not God. <laughs> because uh, the one thing that, you know, in that show, the clip we just saw with Lucifer accusing God of being deadbeat and all this suffering happening because of him. Well, what he failed to mention is that Lucifer was the cause of all of this pain. Lucifer was the one who tempted Eve and Adam in the garden. Lucifer was the one who rebelled in heaven, okay, and, and caused the fall and caused sin to come into this universe. God was the one who created a very good universe. God was the one who created perfectly good people that, that would, all they would enjoy was happiness and, and, and his blessings. It was God that is the good one, and Lucifer that was the cause of all this evil, right? Uh, correct. And but he, he portrays himself as, as being misunderstood, uh, as being given a job that he didn't want, uh, being punished, you know, and being sent out to rule over hell. Now we know that he's not the ruler of hell. We know that he's the prince of the air. Okay, uh, he's a he's a murderer. He's the father of lies. Um, 
but he has this <clears throat> um, like promotion. He promotes himself as being good and, and being misunderstood, uh, and, and just wanted wants everyone to be happy. And he did, and he turned a third of the angels against God. He convinced them, and we have to go back and realize that he convinced angels in heaven, in the presence of God, to follow him and rebel against God. This is how this anointed cherub is. is. You know, he's, he's that powerful. He, he lies. He's very charismatic. And we see the uh, actor that plays Lucifer in this show has been, uh, you know, uh, sophisticated, suave, you know, all the women want to be with him, all the men want to be just like him. And in this show, the bad one is actually God, plus also Michael. Right. And so it's, it's basically he flips the script on the in the show. And then, guys, you know, uh, mm -hmm. I, I watched this show uh, for, the, you know, we're doing the program, and we got all this information from the show. I could only watch it for so long. Uh, uh, bless Lewis's heart. He toughed it out and actually finished. Uh, he binge watched the show and he had to do a lot of fast forwarding. <laughs> he told me, and uh, and this show is wicked. I mean, look, it's basically Lucifer's show, basically his Bible. He's taking everything that the Bible says about him and God and flipping it on its head, basically saying that God is the evil one. And Lucifer is really the good one. And, and as Lewis, since he's the one that finished it, as we go through the series, he's going to be divulging more and more information every week about the show. So you can see it just how far it went. And the sad thing about this is a lot of people will actually start to have sympathy for the devil because of this. Okay, because they don't know the Bible. You know, it's easy to blame God. You know, I'm first parent. Adam and Eve, they blame God. Adam blamed God. Yeah. You know, and when God asked them, he said, Adam, where are you? Who told you you were naked? Did you eat of the tree? Oh, uh, it was the woman that you gave me. See, Adam didn't say, yeah. yes, it was my fault. I'm sorry. I sinned. I shouldn't have done it. No, he said it was the woman you gave me. So Adam pointed the finger at God and then his wife, right? So he said, hey, I'm innocent. Uh, you know, if you didn't give me that woman, I, you know, I wouldn't have done it. But that, it doesn't fly that way. And this is exactly what uh, this program, Lucifer, is doing and the many uh, 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 movies and also video games uh, that, that are doing this. Matter of fact, we have one more clip to show you. Uh, this is from the video game Dante's Inferno. Now, if you don't believe that Satan is coming after the youth, I don't know what to tell you. Okay, but take a look at this clip and then we'll come back and talk about it. Roll it. You dare assault me! You who have done far worse than I! I stood for my fellow angels, for reason and justice, and then he made you in his image. You, the flawed creation, and I was to bow down to you! As you can see, uh, in this game, you have, you know, Lucifer saying, I stand for my fallen angels. And, you know, he, you know, I was perfect in all this. And then he created you, the fallen, the flawed creation, speaking of humanity. And that uh, he, he's talking about how God wanted him to bow down to man. And he refused to do it. Because the Bible does say that angels are sent to minister to those who are the heirs of salvation. And one day, Christians and the glorified bodies will be elevated above angels. Satan knows this. And in that video game clip, brother, he said it from his heart, didn't he? Yes, he did. And, and you're watching a video game, but if, if, if you just close your eyes and listen to the words, it, it, it'll be so, so obvious that it's Satan speaking. And, and he uses games because if he can get to the children, because that's how Satan works. He gets to, to children um, when they're, you know, five, six, seven. They, he lets them see things in the spiritual world that sometimes, you know, it scares them and scars them for life. And the communist agenda is to indoctrinate children. Okay? Not when they're adults, when you're children. The Catholic Church indoctrinates children so they can grow up to be good Catholics. 
but actually they're following Satan. Um, and, and, and this is how he gets to them as, as a child, because you know, as a grown up, a lot of the problems that you have as a grown up go back to your childhood that are still with you and, and you keep bringing them back. And this is his agenda. Right. And the Bible says we shouldn't do that. We shouldn't be bringing back things from our childhood. He says to forget those things which are behind and, and press forward to, the, to, to Christ. You know, when psychologists tell you, oh, you got to relive your past, bring up all that stuff. No, that goes against what the Bible says. Forget those things which are behind. There's this excuse about, oh, the reason he's a serial killer is because he had a rough childhood. Is this another satanic excuse for sin? Okay? You know, yeah, all of us at one point had some roughness in our childhood, and some people had it really bad. Some people were abused and raped and all of that, and yet they turned out to be some of the finest Christians who don't blame their past. They don't use that as an excuse. So uh, that's another satanic lie that you got to bring up your past and you got to, the reason you are the way you are is because of your past. No, Jesus Christ said to forget those things uh, that were, are behind. Okay. The word of God says that. Okay. And Jesus is the word, but um, you know, we only have a few minutes left, but brother, you know, when I'm, we see all these clips that we just showed, and this is only the beginning guys. There's so many, there's too many clips to show uh, in this series. We're going to try to get to, many different clips from many different shows, but you're going to start to see a theme here. Okay. Uh, and the very last clip we're going to use, that's, uh, you know, that's uh, one of the, the worst speeches I have ever heard. And this is, it's like you're listening, like Lewis has said, like you're listening to Satan himself. If you were to close your eyes, you would hear the devil speak. And that's going to be, we're saving that one for last, okay? And um, because it's, it's the worst. I, in, in my opinion, it's the worst. But um, you're going to start to see a theme here between all of these clips, okay? You're going to start to see Satan saying he's the good guy. Satan blaming God for all the evil in the world. Satan getting a bad rap, right? All he wanted to do is love man and show and free man. You know, that's all he wanted to do, okay? Uh, Satan saying God is a deadbeat uh, uh, or absentee landlord or whatever, that he, he started this thing, but he has no involvement in it. He just lets us do whatever we want and lets all the bad things happen, right? As if God is not involved. You're going to start to see, and you see the hatred. Lewis said something to me off camera, and I want him to repeat that here. Talk to us about the hatred in some of these and the transformation in the faces of some of these actors. Well, you can see that, you know, the very good actors, um, but once they get into this dialogue that they have to do, you see the changes in their faces and, and, and you see that this is no longer that human actor actually acting. This is someone who is possessed at the time when he's speaking this because he wants, Satan wants the word out. Um, and, and, you know, sometimes when you speak in anger, people actually listen more to you. And you can see the transformations in their faces. Wow. Wow, brother. Well, you know, guys, uh, this, this first episode it went by fast. <clears throat> All of our episodes go by fast. When you, you know, when you're talking about the word of God, uh, uh, it just goes by pretty fast because we, we love talking about the word of God. And uh, we love exposing darkness. And that's exactly what we're doing today. You know, uh, we're, we're supposed to expose the darkness according to the word, right? And, um, you know, we have to look out for our, the next generation, the children who may be sucked into these lies that are being pumped into their eyes every single day through the television or Internet or whatever, okay? And so this is what we're doing. So, Brother Lewis, we always want to end with the gospel. And uh, time is running short on this planet. The Lord Jesus Christ is soon to come. And uh, the, the things around the world are lining up perfectly for the rapture to take place pretty soon. Um, it's getting really dark down here. So what must a person do to be saved? Do they have to, you know, like the Ash Wednesday just passed. Do they have to put ashes on their head or they got to put holy water or do they got to walk on their knees on bottle caps up the stairs? We've got to pray to Mary through the rosary. What must they do to be saved? Oh. You know, we, we have the, 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 the gospel that we preach, um, and we forget sometimes that Satan has his own gospel. Um, our gospel says that no one is good, not one, 
And Satan says that everybody's good and they should all be rewarded and they should all be going to heaven. But once you, it, once you look past that and you realize, wait, no one is good. I am not good. Okay. Uh, I, I, I have a problem. I have a sin nature in me that makes me do things that I shouldn't <clears throat> be doing. You know, Paul says the things that I want to do, I don't do. And the things that I don't want to do, I do. It's our sin nature. And once you realize that, and you realize that your sins are against an eternal God, your sins are eternal, you need someone to wipe those sins away from your life because you want to go to heaven. You want to be with the Father, which is what everyone wants. But to do this, you realize you're a sinner, and you go to the one that can wipe the sins, that slate clean for you, that can, when the Father looks at you, he no longer looks at you as a sinner, but he sees Jesus in you. Uh, so you accept Jesus as your Savior. You go to him and you tell him, I need a Savior. I'm a sinner. Forgive me. Uh, and and thank him for what he did on the cross. Amen. Uh, the Bible says all that call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. Please, guys, do not put it off any longer. If you're hearing our voices right now, make a decision now. Okay? It's it, Jesus did all the hard work. He did the hard part, and he offers this salvation as a gift to you. As you can see, just from this first episode, Satan has his gospel out there. He has his ministers out there, and he has his children out there preaching a wicked gospel that will leave you damned, leave you in torment in hell for all eternity, separated from the God who loves you, who loved you enough to send his only begotten son Jesus Christ to die in your place and to take the wrath of those sins on himself in your place, okay, and rise again on the third day for our justification. So don't hesitate. Don't wait any longer. You may, you may not guarantee tomorrow. What we are guaranteed, everybody will meet God. Either you're going to meet him as a saved individual or you're going to meet him as a damned individual. Those are your two options. Either he's going to be your father or he's going to be your judge. That's it. There's no third option. Okay? If you follow Satan, you're going to get Satan's reward. Okay? That, that's just the way it is. There's no good ending for following Satan. Everybody in hell right now, they know the truth. They just realize it too late. And they can't get out anymore. They're stuck there. We don't want that for any of you guys. We want you guys to be able to enjoy and rejoice in the presence of the Lord. The Lord is coming soon. Time is short. Make no mistake about it. It could happen tonight. Okay? And we want to see you with us in the kingdom of Christ. Okay. So until next time, my friends. And by the way, join us next week for part two on our new series, The Devil Speaks. We're going to be getting in some more clips. Okay? And uh, we're going to be breaking it down. So until next time, my friends, look up. Our redemption draws near. Maranatha and God bless.